If you're an income investor and you're not generating more than $500 a month, we have one question for you. Are you crazy? Let ETFguide.com help you. A $100,000 portfolio using our timely strategies should be able to generate between $500 and $2,000 per month. Go to ETFguide.com to get our monthly income trades. Click on ETF combos and we'll show you how to turn your investments into a cash cow. Isn't it time you lowered your risk and increased your monthly income? Go to ETFguide.com and we'll show you how. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. This is America's only weekly program focused on the important stock and bond indexes and the financial products that track them. And now presenting your host, Ron DeLegend. Ron DeLegend. Welcome to the program. Coming up on today's show, how to hedge your investments. Do you own stocks? Do you own ETFs? We're going to talk with our program guest, Dave Pinson. He's with a company called Portfolio Armor. We're going to be talking about strategies on how to protect your profits. And so Dave Pinson's coming up a little bit later. Also going to talk about stock valuations. How do they compare to the dot-com era? We will talk about that. We will also talk about any particular mutual funds, ETFs, individual stocks that you want to consider on today's broadcast just call us 877-711-5611 give us your first name along with your city we will get to you also you can tweet me live at index show is my twitter handle and uh, you can also email me ron at index show.com as i've been warning you all week we just did our monthly income trade for September. And boy, was it a good one. Now, just to give you a quick recap, every single month, my income mix all ETF portfolio, which is available at etfguide.com to our subscribers, we sell every single month covered calls. In the, with the idea here is to generate additional income on the investment portfolio over and above what we get from dividends and from yield income. And for the month of September, I'm pleased to announce we generated with today's trade, because we always do it a month in advance, $764 of monthly income, which is outstanding. In fact, it's a heck of a lot more than you would get on a $100,000 investment in a bank CD or bank certificate of depression. So 764 bucks for the month of September, pretty darn good. In fact, the income mix portfolio, going back to August of 2012, we've averaged a yield of 10.7%. So you do the math on that. A 10.7% yield, you're not even getting a 3% yield on 10-year U.S. Treasuries right now. And heck, if you put your money in a certificate of depression at your local bank, and you lock away your money for five years, you'll be lucky to get 2%. 2% for the entire year. And we've averaged 10.7% over the past year for our income mix portfolio. So this is what's called generating high income the smart way. And we're doing it. If you want to follow along with our trade and know what particular ETFs we're selling those covered calls on and the strike prices and the expiration dates and all that stuff. Just go to ETFguide.com, click on the ready to go portfolios and you will be signed up and you can follow along. Now taking a look at stock market action today, we saw the Dow, the S&P and the NASDAQ all up uh, between a quarter to three quarters of 1%. And the all 10 sectors within the S&P 500 did have positive gains. We also saw a second quarter gross domestic product or GDP here in the U.S. Uh, rev being revised upward uh, to 2.5% from 1.7%. That was interpreted in a positive way by the mar bar market. And really, I pose this question to you. If GDP is so good as it seems to be, then what prevents the Fed or what will stop the Fed from scaling back on quantitative easing. And that's what my interpretation of this is. 
My interpretation is if GDP is so great as it was painted out to be in the latest report for the second quarter, 2.5%, they were expecting 1.7%. This is further ammunition that the Fed should indeed scale back its massive QE or monthly bond purchases of $85 billion of U.S. Treasuries. It should indeed scale that back beginning in September. And if they don't, well, this number here, this 2.5% for GDP, it, it would pretty much, I don't want to say amaze me, but I would say it would surprise me because of the fact that GDP is so strong. This is exactly what the Fed wanted to see, isn't it? This is why they even began the quantitative easing or QE in the first place, because economic growth was so anemic, was so slow. And you're telling me 2.5% for the second quarter, which I don't want to say blew away, but it did do an awesome job of outperforming expectations. So I don't see how the Fed does not scale back QE come September, especially after this GDP reading. This is not the sort of GDP reading that would dissuade the Fed from scaling back. I can tell you that. 877-711-5611. That's a number. We're here. We're live. Taking a look at the market. You know, the S&P 500 was very curious. It closed slightly up today almost a quarter percent to close at 1638. And what I find very interesting is that the VIX, which historically has moved in the opposite direction of the S&P about 80% of the time, you had the VIX was actually up almost 2% today to 1681, which you would expect, you would think, on a day when the S&P 500 is up, the VIX would actually be down just because of that historical inverse relationship, which has worked out about 80, 85% of the time. Well, today was one of the few times where that historical inverse relationship did not come into play because both the VIX and the S&P were up on the same day. And speaking of the VIX, we had a trade that we gave to our subscribers in the September ETF Profit Strategy newsletter. And we cashed in we actually bought VIX call options. Now, there are a few ETFs and e ETNs tracking the VIX. We don't really use them, though, just because they don't do a good job, in our opinion, of tracking the VIX and its movements on a short-term basis. We'd rather use call options just because we don't have all that time decay that you get built into the ETN and the ETF. We also don't have the situation of contango and so forth and some of the operational issues and problems that face these exchange traded products that try to track the VIX and often don't do a good job. In fact, there could be some days when the VIX is way up and some of these VIX ETFs and ETNs are down. And that's not the sort of thing that we'd like to see. So that's why we'd rather focus our VIX trades when we make them. We don't make many of them but when we do make them, we want to be absolutely precise. We want to be in. We want to be out. We want to pick our spots. And man, have we been doing that. Our latest trade on the VIX options, call options, we bought them at 260 bucks a contract. We sold half that position today at $340. Nice little return there. That trade, by the way, that's about a two-week trade. So you do the math on that. We bought them at 260. We sold them at 340. That's an $80 profit. That's pretty good. For what? Two weeks of work? So it's all about being correctly positioned before the move happens. And that's what we're all about. We're trying to help you be on the right side of the market. These are the sort of strategic moves that you can make to set yourself up for success. We're going to see some more bigger moves in the VIX upcoming. Just wait. This is a warm-up for what we've seen in the VIX. You ain't seen nothing yet. The VIX is a sleeping giant. 
This is the Index Investing Show. I'm your host, Ron DeLegge, 877-711-5611. How do you hedge your investment portfolio? We're going to talk about that. Stay with us. Show with Ron Shazam! Shazam! Kaching, kaching! That's the sound of muffs making money. And are you making money? Well, even though the yields have been jumping. More than 40% on the 10-year yield for the bond, U.S. Treasury bond. We're now at 2.75%. It's still not enough to really think, to live off of when you think about it. Who can live off of 2.75%? Now, even though we haven't had much inflation over the past five years, if we use the CPI, which is a commonly used benchmark or yardstick of consumer inflation... Don't get me talking about why it's a, a faulty measure of inflation for consumer inflation, but that's a whole other subject. But let's just assume that it's a, it, it's a halfway decent benchmark or yardstick of consumer inflation. Over the past five years, the CPI has averaged 2%. So you're getting 2.75% today on a 10-year U.S. bond, treasury bond, so you deduct 2% from your 2.75%. It's fourth grade math. You're left with three quarters of a percent. By the time you pay taxes on that, you're left with almost nothing. And who in their right mind invests their money to wind up with nothing or to wind up equal? I mean, it's heinous. This is why to combat today's low rate environment, you need an arsenal. You need something besides traditional dividends and dividend-paying types of investments. That's all good. That's all nice. But it's just not enough in today's extreme environment of low rates. SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, that's the ETF, SPY, you're getting a current yield at the end of July, a 12-month yield of just under 2%. You can't live on that. That's even less than what you're getting on a 10-year U.S. Treasury bond. This is why we do our monthly income trades, so that you can generate additional income, high income on your investments over and beyond what you're getting from dividends over the past year. I'm talking from to August of 2013. This is a proven strategy. We own all ETF portfolio. We own just three funds that cover three distinct asset classes, U.S. stocks, U.S. REITs or real estate investment trusts, and then commodities. And then every single month we sell covered calls. For this latest month, for September, because we always do it a month in advance, we've already generated 764 bucks. And from August of 2012 to August of 2013, we've already generated, based on a $100,000 all ETF portfolio, that's a hypothetical portfolio, we've generated $10,700, which works out to a 10.7% yield. That's pretty good. And that's called assassinating today's low-rate environment situation with a winning strategy. 877-711-5611 is the number. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. I'm your host, Ron DeLegge. I'm also the publisher of ETFguide.com. We have just released our September Profit Strategy Newsletter. Go pick up a copy. It's jam-packed with money-making strategies using exchange-traded funds, also known as ETFs. We already highlighted one particular trade that we cashed in on. It was a trade on the VIX. We told subscribers to buy the VIX. I'm not going to tell you the strike price or the month of expiration because that's reserved for subscribers, but... I will tell you that we picked up the contracts at 260 bucks each, and we just unloaded half of that position 
at 340 bucks a contract for an $80 gain. So in terms of in terms of a performance, what are we looking at? What type of what type of gain is that? $260. That's what we paid for the contracts. We sold them for an $80 profit. So we're looking at about a 30% return. 30% return within 2 weeks. Now, that's a pretty good pretty good return. We'll see how the other half of this position work out. We're still bullish though on a higher VIX. I can tell you that. It was interesting too to see the action of the VIX, which is a measure of fear in the stock market. When the VIX is high, that means fear is high. When the VIX is low, conversely, it means there's not a lot of fear. There's a lot of complacency. And right now in the VIX, we just haven't seen that that moment of ultimate fear. We just haven't had that. In, a, in about a month or two, we're getting peaks and valleys, but right now we're, we're due. We're due for another pop in the VIX, so we're still bullish on this particular trade, but that's just one of a few positions that we still have open. We also have a couple of uh, open positions on other ETFs like the Home Builders. We're short that particular sector. We also just opened up a brand new position in a new ETF. Well, actually, it's not a new ETF, but it's an ETF that is designed to go opposite treasury bonds, long-term treasury bonds. And so we'll let you know how that one works out. This is another opportunity, though, I think, for the next leg up in interest rates. And we we are expecting another, another jump in interest rates. We'll see if we get that. Uh, Jeffrey Gunlock. Is that how you say his name? Gunlock or is Gunlock? It's G-U-N-D-L-A-C-H. Gunlock, Gunlotch, you say tomato, I say tomato. Anyway, he's the CEO and Chief Investment Officer of Double Line Capital. I'm not sure if he's a billionaire, but he's got a lot of money. And he also has been right about a lot of things. And one of the things that he's saying, and it's not often that I quote money managers on this show because most of them are worth worthless, and actually most of them underperform consistently low cost index brainless brainless index funds and brainless index ETFs most of them underperform gunlock uh, he's been pretty good i have to say i got to hand it to him so he's saying that the yield on 10 year us treasuries could go as high as 3.1% by year end right now we're at 2.75% if he's right and he's been right about a lot of things we should see a nice pop in our latest trade to short long-term U.S. treasuries. We'll see. I'll keep you posted on that. Go to ETFguide.com and look for the Profit Strategy Newsletter. Sign up. You won't be disappointed. Coming up in a little bit, in fact, I can see him warming up in the bullpen. We've got Dave Pinson of Portfolio Armor. We're going to be talking about how to hedge your investment portfolio against declines. We're going to talk about what hedging means. We'll talk about a couple other key asset classes besides treasuries i want to ask him about gold we've seen a nice little dead cat bounce here in the price of gold and silver over the past several weeks and i am really really reluctant to buy into this i i really think it's nothing more than a sucker rally or a bull trap that uh, that you know that that's going to suck in an, enough people for the next leg down in gold so i uh i nevertheless will uh, hold my opinions in, in in this particular interview we're just going to focus on how to hedge existing long positions in gold along with the spider gold shares ticker symbol gld which is the largest gold etf in the world gld is the ticker symbol and that particular etf has how much how many assets does it have it has about 39 40 billion dollars in assets so it's a pretty big ETF. In fact, one of the largest, like I said, that uh, that owns uh, gold. 877-711-5611 is the number. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. I'm your host, Ron Deleggi. If you'd like to join us, we're here. We're also going to talk about, in a little bit, I want to talk about stock market valuations and how they compare today to the 
dot com era when stocks went up, up, up before they went down, down, down. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. Coming up next, Dave Pinson at Portfolio Armor. Be here or be nowhere. You've heard them on the radio and seen them on TV. Gold experts promising big profits. The truth is gold prices have crashed and investment demand is down over 50%. According to the World Gold Council, while gold experts keep promising higher prices, the Profit Strategy Newsletter at ETFguide.com told its subscribers the gold bubble would pop. Our gold alert given to subscribers in early 2013 resulted in a 500% gain. Listening to gold experts would have lost you a boatload of money. Listening to ETFguide.com would have helped you to profit. Stop listening to gold experts and stop following the crowd. Subscribe to the Profit Strategy Newsletter at ETFguide.com and make money. Our no-bull approach is world famous, and what happens next in the gold market will shock the entire globe. Join today and get a $50 bonus by using promo code SAVE50. We'll tell you what to buy, what to sell, and when to do it. Be ready for the next big move in gold only at ETFguide.com. So, let me get this straight. We insure our homes... We insure our automobiles. We insure our lives. In other words, we're insuring our most precious assets. Well, what about hedging or protecting our investing assets, our portfolios? Here to talk with us about that is Dave Pinson at Portfolio Armor. He's got a, an app. He's developed a system that helps investors to identify the best way to hedge their their stock as well as ETF positions. Dave, welcome to the Index Investing Show. It's great to have you with us. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for having me. And uh, you're joining us from Hackensack, New Jersey. Let's begin by asking you to just clarify for us what you mean by hedging a portfolio or or protecting a portfolio. How, how are we doing this? Well, I think you, you made a great comparison in your intro when you mentioned insurance. You talked about insuring cars, insuring houses. And hedging is just a form of insurance. That's all it is. It's a way to protect yourself against an investment you own uh, declining significantly. Now, one particular asset that's been declining, it, it has since enjoyed a wonderful dead cat bounce, has been gold. And since the start of August, both gold and silver have been up. We tracked the ETF, the Spider Gold Shares, ticker symbol GLD. It looks like it could be a good time if you've got a long position in GLD to take a look at hedging that position. Talk about that. Yeah, that, that's a great point. And that's something actually you and I talked about before gold really. Well, I guess the beginning of the year it wasn't doing too great. But when it was much higher in the spring, we talked about it before the real steep correction. And uh, I know one portfolio armor user uh, around that time, I think it was April, Ron, we spoke. Yeah, it um, was. Mm-hmm. He did a very tight collar, and a collar is simply a type of hedge where you give up some of your potential upside in return for reducing the cost of your insurance. And he did one where he capped his potential upside in gold at 7% over the next six months or so, and, and by the same token, um, gave himself a maximum potential downside of 7%. And I think at that point, gold was in the 150s or something, or GLD was in the 150s. And he really saved himself a, a huge loss in his portfolio doing that. So you can use a similar technique today. And as we're talking, I'm just going into the Portfolio Armor iPhone app to see what the cost of this would be. I'll tell you now, right now. Yeah, that's good. And, and while you're doing that, uh, if you're just mm -hmm. joining us, you're listening to the Index Investing Show. We're pleased to be talking with Dave Pinson at Portfolio Armor, and you can uh, check out his website, PortfolioArmor.com. And as he just mentioned there, too, that he's developed an outstanding app. It's uh, it's downloadable at iTunes. You can check it out and, and download it onto your iPad or iPhone. And uh, it, it is a very, very useful tool in helping you identify uh, what particular points or hedges and the cost of those hedges 
that uh, that you can look at to protect your downside in terms of your investments. It applies to both stocks as well as ETFs. So we're talking about the Spider Gold shares, ticker symbol GLD, and we're looking at a hedge for right now. Take it away, Dave. Yeah, sure. Well, let's say you wanted to hedge against uh, any loss greater than 10% in GLD over the next several months. And just pulling up the numbers, and, and this is real easy to do with a portfolio on your iPhone app. You just type in GLD, the number of shares you own. I put in 100 shares for this example. And then the, the lowest you're willing to see a drop, which is what we call a threshold. So I put 10% there. And the cost of that hedge to protect against anything greater than 10%, uh, a 10% loss would be 3.9%, which is a little expensive. But if you want to cap your upside at, say, 9% over the same time frame, and we're talking about between now and late March, and as I'm talking, I'm just running the numbers here, that cost drops down to 0.29% of your position value, or $40 to hedge a 100-share position. And, you know, you can adjust this. If you don't want to pay anything, you can get paid to hedge. For example, I'm just punching right now a cap of 8%, which means that you're willing to give up any upside over 8% over the next uh, seven months or so. And if you do that, um, you'll actually get paid 30 bucks to protect yourself against a greater than 10% decline over the next seven months. So um, I guess that's one difference between, you know, the insurance forms you mentioned before of insuring your house or insuring your car or insuring your stocks or your ETFs. Um, it's important to insure everything if you want to avoid losses or avoid significant losses, but no one's going to pay you to hedge your, to insure your car or to insure your house. That's a, um, that's but a someone great... may hedge you, pay you to, to hedge your ETFs, so... Yep, that's a great point, and you can have that hedge, be paid to hedge, which makes total sense. 877-711-5611 is the number. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. Pleased to be talking with Dave Pinson. He's the founder at PortfolioArmor.com. Now, what type of minimum threshold or rule of thumb should investors, do you think, use as as a willing number to, to take or accept uh, or absorb maximum losses? Is there a certain level? Well, that's a great question, and I, I think it depends in part on the, the type of investment you're in and the type of investor you are. So I, I would think, for example, with a bond investment, you might want to go for a smaller threshold because the potential upside, the potential returns if things go well, are probably not as great as they would be in, in an equity investment. So just to throw it out there, you might want to consider, say, a 15% threshold for a bond investment. In other words, you wouldn't want to take any loss greater than 15% on it. And then for equities, you might want to consider something larger, 20%. But you're more than welcome to to look for tighter hedges if you have uh, less of a risk tolerance. And, you know, speaking of bonds, uh, we looked at one example on the Portfolio Armor Tumblr blog, which is just uh, portfolioarmor.tumblr.com uh, today because there's been a lot of talk about the Fed tapering its investment of treasury bonds, which means buying fewer of them, and at some point, presumably, buying none of them and selling some of them. And in any market, if, if the, the biggest buyer out there stops buying things, there's a good chance that, that uh, what's being bought is going to drop. And in this case, that would be treasury. So if you look at the, um, the ETF that tracks the long treasury bond, the symbol for the TLT, um, we posted a way right there of hedging against a greater than 11% drop in it over the next several months and getting paid to do so. That's a that's a great idea. And we've already seen, by the way, TLT since the beginning of the year drop at least that much. So uh, that's, uh, that's a, a very, very good idea. Now, let's talk about timing, you know, which I think is very important. Uh, you know, hedging like insurance, the time to do it is before the house goes up in smoke. Exactly. Talk about that. Right. Talk about that. That's a great point. I've used the expression buying umbrellas when it's sunny out, but, uh, you know, you could also say buying insurance in your house before before the flood or the fire, and it's the exact same point. Once things start to go south, the cost of, of insurance is going to go up, and the cost of hedging is going to go up. So the interesting thing about gold, though, is that the first few months of this year, uh, gold and the ETF that tracks the GLD did not do very well but it wasn't like a steep decline. It was sort of like a steady decline. And up until about March or early April, it was still very inexpensive to hedge gold. 
and to, uh, to hedge the ETF GLD. But once you had that precipitous drop, there was that, I think it was two days, a Monday and a Tuesday, where you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was 11 or 12 percent the ETF dropped in just two days. Uh, it was really expensive after that point to hedge. So again, as you mentioned, if you own something and you're concerned about downside risk, the time to consider hedging is probably before um, bad stuff happens. We got another 30 seconds to go. Where do people find Portfolio Armor, and is it for just iPhone, or do you have an Android app? Talk about that. We don't have an Android app right now, but if you don't have an iPhone, you can use the web version, which you can find at PortfolioArmor.com, and that's Armor spelled the American way, A-R-M-O-R. And you can also find, if you have an iPhone, it's on the on the um, iTunes uh, store. And there's also a blog we have at PortfolioArmor.tumblr, T-U-M-B-L-E-R.com. And that gives examples. Uh, a few times a week we post examples of actual hedges and uh, also provide links to the website, PortfolioArmor.com, and uh, the iTunes preview page where you can buy the iPhone. Well, that's a great interview. Uh, Dave is also a contributor at ETFGuy.com. We appreciate you taking the time, Dave. We'll catch up with you again soon. Thanks for having me. Take care. This is the Index Investing Show. I'm Ron DeLegge. We'll be right back. The Index Investing Show with Ron DeLegge. Okay, 877-711-5611. That's the number. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. Coming off a great interview there with Dave Pinson at Portfolio Armor. And we talked about what it means to hedge your investment portfolio. Really what we're talking about is using put options to protect your downside. And the way put options are designed is that they increase in value when the underlying ETF or the underlying security uh, begins to fall. So it's really a form of insurance when you buy a put option on an existing ETF or stock position, you're really, what you're doing is hedging yourself. You're buying protection. And the idea is to buy that protection, well, before the house goes up in smoke, before the ETF or the stock begins to collapse in price. We, obviously, we don't want that, do we? I mean, we buy something because we believe in it. We think it's going to go up in value. But it doesn't always work like that, does it? And there are times when we do need to hedge. And the best time to hedge, as we outlined in that interview, is before, before the market crashes, before the house goes up in smoke, before the accident, the train wreck, wreck happens. That's the time to buy insurance. And sometimes insurance is cheaper at certain points in history or at certain moments than it is compared to other moments. For example, we talked about GLD, which tracks the price of gold bullion. That's the ticker symbol, GLD, the spider gold shares. And we had Dave on this very program back in early April before GLD, like gold, fell out, fell out of the sky. It was trading at uh, around 150 bucks a share when gold was at 1500 bucks an ounce and it just just completely just got it cratered. It got crushed and it fell all the way to uh, the $130 area and basically we we talked ahead of that before that moment when gold began to crash we were talking about hedging it and if you listen to that show and you were smart enough to take that advice to hedge the portfolio to protect yourself against that that down move and gold well you were rewarded actually you weren't rewarded you were protected because insurance is not about reward insurance is about protection it's about hedging it's not about profiting it's about not losing 8777115611 is a number you're listening to the index investing show I'm Ron DeLegge. I also uh, write and I publish the ETF Profit Strategy newsletter. It's available at ETFguide.com. Go there. Our September issue has just been released. We also just executed our monthly income trade. We generated over $740. And since the end of last August of 2012, we've generated 
over $10,700 of monthly income. And the average yield on that income mix ETF portfolio has been 10.7%. 10.7%, which is a pretty darn good yield. Considering that 10-year U.S. Treasury yields are 2.75%. So this is what we're talking about, generating higher income on your investments. This is really a portfolio I think that's well-built for those of us that have reached the point of retirement, Perhaps we're already retired, and our portfolio strategy has changed a bit. When we were younger, when we were saving for retirement, when we were working, the goal was to grow money. It was to save money and to have that money accumulate and to compound interest. Now that we are retired, now that we've reached the point of retirement, the goal has changed. We're no longer in the midst of accumulating money. Now we're, we, you, we could say you're at the decumulation phase. We're starting to use some of that money we've accumulated, we've saved over the years, and we're generating, we're trying to generate income on the money we've accumulated. We want high income. We don't want to outlive our money. And so the way to do this is, as we do every month with our income mix ETF portfolio, one strategy, as we've used very successful strategy, just selling covered calls every single month. It's a beautiful strategy. And we just did our September income trade, 740 bucks. Go to etfguide.com, join us. I'll show you how to juice. I'll show you how to supersize your monthly income. Now, let's talk about stock valuations, which have not gotten this bubbly, which have not gotten this bloated, since the dot-com era. In fact, according to Bloomberg, the last time that gains in stocks outpaced profit expansion by this much was way back in 1999. And at that time, equity valuations surged almost 20% in a year's time to 30 times reported profit. And we know what happened thereafter. S&P 500, crashed 49% from March 2000 all the way through October of 2002. The dot-com bubble burst because, well, valuations couldn't be supported by earnings. Valuations were too high. So what about today? What are valuations looking like today, and how do they compare versus the dot-com era? Well, so far in 2013, the Spider S&P 500 ETF, SPY, has climbed around 15.5% year-to-date. That despite the fact that earnings growth has been the slowest since 1998. And we're talking about non-recession years. This is, technically speaking, a non-recession year. And so we've had the slowest earnings growth in 2013 since 1998. Now, what does that mean in terms of valuations? What does that mean in terms of what we can say is coming for stocks? Well, since bottoming in 2009, the S&P 500's 145% rally has grown long in the tooth. And we know that because it's outlasted the average bull market the length of 49 months. That's the average bull length, bull market length, 49 months. That's what it's been since the mid-40s, the mid-1940s. So right now, we're at 53 months. In other words, we're four months overdue. We should have given birth to the baby, the sell-off baby, the market correction baby, at 49 months. But now we're at 53 months. And so you can see what we mean when we say that this particular bull market rally has outlasted the average bull market length. It's getting long in the tooth. And as it gets long in the tooth, what happens is that valuations continue to get richer and richer. And yet we have a, a, a situation where earnings growth doesn't support those higher valuations. 
So this is something that's got to be rectified. This is something that's got to be dealt with. And the financial markets at some point will come to the realization that earnings, growth, has got to match up with prices and that these discrepancies cannot continue indefinitely. And this is why we talk about, as we just did in that interview with Dave Pinson, the importance of being ready, the importance of hedging your investment portfolio, the importance of having insurance protection. And this is just one strategy that we discussed using put options on an all ETF portfolio. It can also work if you own individual stocks in your portfolio. Of course, we prefer that you own low-cost index ETFs because, number one, there's a lot less volatility. Number two, there's a lot less risk than investing in individual stocks. But if you do own individual stocks, the hedging strategies we discussed on today's show can still be used. Well, that just about does it for another episode of the Index Investing Show. Thank you for joining us, nation. And we will be here tomorrow, same time, same station. And just by way of reminder, if you ever miss our regular daily broadcast, you can pick up our free podcast. Just search under the Index Investing Show on iTunes. Soon we will begin publishing our show on YouTube. So stay tuned for that. At Index Show is my Twitter handle. And until we meet again, may the market indexes be with you. The opinions expressed in this broadcast are not necessarily that of our advertisers, sponsors, or broadcast partners. The discussion of investing is general and should not be construed as investment advice or an offer to buy or sell securities. Listeners are responsible for their own investment decisions and results. Before investing in mutual funds or ETFs, always consult a prospectus for risk, charges, expenses, and other information. Read the prospectus carefully before investing. Past performance is not indicative of future results. No reproduction or dissemination of the index investing shows permitted without the expressed written consent of its producers.